Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today I'm going to give you some homework. This is just a video actually to give an exercise to some of my deep dive students to explain a way of studying arrangement. So how do you study arrangement? Well, the number one thing is to look at how other people do arrangement, right? That sounds pretty simple, but it's actually not so easy because like in visual composition, you can talk about the two-dimensional space and you can absorb it all in one go. However, in music, you've got the three dimensions of your mixing box plus the dimension of time to think about. And you can only consume it one moment at a time. So you can, you can have this sound sculpture that's evolving over five minutes. And it's kind of hard to pay attention for five minutes to listen with that analytical ear. So this is how you could do it to simplify it, right? Let's jump into Ableton. Okay, in Ableton, I would recommend that you open up a completely blank project with just one audio track. That's all. We're not going to confuse anything with anything. We're just going to we're going to load in one audio file and analyze the hell out of that. So, you go to your reference tracks folder. You go to a folder where you keep all your reference tracks. Just do that. Keep tracks uh, keep a folder of tracks that you think are well produced either in your genre or just in any genre uh, because at different moments of your production career you'll just be happy that you have those ready to go when you need uh, to compare or something so as an example let's look at one of these tracks let's drag it in and so one thing that we're going to see is this thing is not going to be at the exact beats per minute that the default is of my set. So that's just something we have to deal with. We have to drag the track all the way to the left. Okay. We're going to go look at the start of it. See how the first beat does not line up with the first bar. Let's fix that by going in to our file down here, zoom in and drag it in. Hop. Okay. So now the first beat is lined up exactly there and see how See how the kick does not line up to the grid here? That's because the beats per minute of the track is faster or slower than the beats per minute here. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that warping is off. Make sure warping is completely off. And then what you can do is you can just literally move your BPM up and down. There you go. See that? 121 lines up exactly with the grid. And it and because everyone is making music in DAW these days, like 99% of music is made to an exact BPM number, not like some, not something in between. So it's quite predictable that this is probably going to stay correct all the way through your track. And that's great because then we can see, now we can analyze things in blocks of 16, blocks of uh, four bars, blocks of 16 bars, whatever. And so... Here we go. Now, what we can do is we can hit play and then we can start making locators and we can just say intro, you know, like that. You can name the different parts of your song and here you could call this like the big break and then here it might be the big drop, something like this. And you can start analyzing or breaking apart the track and look here, there's another break and another drop. And so that's that's something you can do. However, you can go even more granular than this. And you can look in and you can say, what instruments exactly are playing here? Let me list them. And you can list them either here, or you can make a system where you write it down on a piece of paper. You can say, okay, there's just a kick drum. Kick drum plus hi-hats, plus atmosphere, okay? Just kick drum, hi-hats and atmosphere for the first eight bars. Same, doesn't change, doesn't change. And like this, you can keep going. Okay, over time, the bass line is coming in in a gradual way. Some tracks, they have it come in immediately. Some have them it coming in in a gradual way. This is a good, this is a study. That's what we're doing right now, right? We're learning how other people are doing it so we can decide how we want to do it. 
So like this, you can then start making notes of where, for instance, the clap comes in, where the various elements comes in, where the where the energy levels peak, where they go down, and how they exactly decide to anticipate the break, what they do in the break. There's obviously different chapters in this break, like there's stuff going on here, and then there's no percussion here, and then there's some kind of percussion here. So these are things that you can now analyze. It doesn't matter what this exact track is doing. It's just that you can analyze them, and then, you also in your project have to have something similar. You have to have some kind of mental model of what am I doing at each moment. This is the this is the moment when I'm teasing the synthesizer. Here the synthesizer comes in. Here the clap comes in. Here all the high elements come in. Here the, all the high elements go away. Here the kick goes away. Here the bass goes away. Here everything goes away and only the pads and the atmospheres stay. And then everything comes back. These kind of these kind of like storytelling. That's what storytelling is, right? So when you make an arrangement, um, these are the kind of decisions you want to make. And so um, a good way to get there eventually is like the, the method of subtractive arrangement that we use a lot in the classes where you stack all your elements on top of each other and then spread them out over time. But when you then find that your arrangement sounds too flat or too random and it doesn't, doesn't feel like the storytelling is really bringing you on a journey, well, come back to it with this new lens where you... you, you you use the vocabulary of another song onto your song. So you say, okay, these are going to be my breaks. These are I'm going to follow the same energy level contour as another song. These are the kind of decisions you can make. Listen to a few songs as well in your genre. Like don't just listen to one. Listen to like five or six of them and make notes for each one of them and make notes where they're different. Make notes which um, musical movements you like, like what kind of arrangement styles do you like? What kind of ones do you want to use in your song? And you'll start noticing after like five or six songs that the basic vocabulary of most songs in your genre will be quite similar. So this is, you can already get very good results just based on that. One thing you can even do is develop your own notation system. So for instance, a while back when I was helping a student learn more about this, we developed together a simple symbol system that's not like anything official or anything, it's just something to help us understand. And as an example, it was like, this would be a section where there's the kick drum playing. And if the hi-hats were playing, that was there as well. If the bass line came in, then that would be that, plus the hi-hats plus the clap, plus a pad. And so in blocks of like 16 beats, you would see the evolution. You would see different things coming in and out. You would see, and then during a break, there would be only the hi-hats plus the bass. And then another part with only the hi-hats and the clap um, and, and a pad and then going back into the kick drum, you know? Um, I'm just trying to encourage you to be uh, a little bit more creative with the tools that you use to analyze your music. You don't have to stick to anyone else's system, like invent something for yourself just to help you understand and analyze other people's music. As I said, this is just kind of a homework assignment for one of my classes. If you want to find out more about that, go to www.underdog.brussels. We run online classrooms where we give you individualized feedback and attention on all your projects. You can sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. The link is in the description. Keep producing. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers.